When darkness descends from the sky, evil will rise and spread across the land. There is no dark heart of the heart of evil, especially in the midst of chaos. So, let's create a warrior without doubt. The Shadow Sapper. The adventures in the Ori region continue in my conceptual third game for fan favorite spin offs, Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, with a brand new story and cast of characters within an expanded version of the Ori region with even more Shadow Pokemon, including mutated Shadow Warp Pokemon based on the Seven Deadly Sins. So if you're not caught up, I highly recommend you go back and watch the three previous chapters. As once again, I'll be picking up right where the last chapter left off with the big cliffhanger. At the end of the last video, the hero Zion was racing through the Ori Desert, chasing after Shadow Deoxys in its speed form as an epic high-speed battle commenced between the two. While fellow hero Michael ran to the Pokemon HQ lab after discovering the power outages were only a diversion, returning to discover the lab burnt to the ground by the newly reformed Team Cypher, which is under new leadership. But who this new Shadow Leader is still remains a mystery, and because of this attack, Zion is now unable to get their memories back, which seemed to hold the key to Wes's whereabouts. But the match was lit by champion Odin of the Fearn Region's adopted granddaughter, the two-faced Twyla, who managed to snag Michael's shadow Lugia after succumbing to the darkness once more, but also revealed herself to somehow be related to former Cypher scientist Lavrina, who in Pokemon Gale of Darkness was the embodiment of evil. Well, in this chapter, all of your questions will finally be answered as we head into the last chapter and climax of this adventure. So, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to show your boy some love and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think. And most importantly, please subscribe to my channel so I can keep it growing. As most of you know by now, while the concepts and designs featured on my channel are all my own, I don't actually draw the artwork featured in my videos, as I have commissioned over 40 talented artists who I work with intimately throughout the creative Michael process. Michael asks what she means, and Twilight's Dark details, Half takes so over saying, So I can saying, take you on these exciting journeys me, through Mikey? my imagination. So please make sure to go follow and support all of them as well. Their links will be provided down below in the description. I'd like to pick this chapter off right where it left off after Twyla's big reveal. Michael asks how this is possible, and Twyla will reveal that former Cypher member Lavrina and scientists responsible for creating XD-001 AK Shadow Lugia also did experiments on people. It turns out Twyla isn't technically Lavrina's sister as she said or suggested, but rather her clone. She was created before Team Cypher was taken down, and Lavrina and Dr. Grievel were all locked up at the end of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. In fact, it turns out, it was Lavrina's work on humans and the human consciousness that inspired the Shadow Slayer model, aka Zion, in the first place. So in a sense, she kind of birthed Zion as well, even though she wasn't directly involved in their creation. But Lavrina's clones all had her consciousness and memories hardwired into them, in the same sense that Zion seems to have Wes's memories and emotions hardwired into them. And this young clone, A.K. Twyla, was found when these labs were raided, and Odin's family ended up adopting her as he found her through the omniscient divine Pokemon and Loden's visions, as it foresaw greatness in her. Because don't forget, at one point both champion Odin and Edlodin thought that Twyla would succeed him as champion one day. But Edlodin's visions are limited and vague, as I've explained in the Firen Saga, so this Pokemon was unable to see the full extent of the darkness within her, which was later awakened after this young clone entered Odin's chamber and came into contact with the Chaos Crown. Which, as a lot of you already know, allowed the darkness within the crown, which was fragments of the legendary and destructive Frostfire, to make its way into Twyla. But turns out, this darkness was actually similar to the dark contagion that creates shadow Pokemon by shutting off their hearts, and actually awakened Lavrina's dormant consciousness within Twyla, allowing this part of her consciousness to live alongside the real Twyla, who was raised by Odin's family, and was a good girl who knew nothing but love up until this point. But this darker half, aka Lavrina, would occasionally slip out. This also explains why Twyla's darker side is so tech-savvy, which was a key part of her introduction in the King's Bounty DLC and this story, Descent of Darkness, as well. So while the real Lavrina is locked up, her evil schemes and thirst for destruction lives on in a fractured Twyla with good Twyla being terrified of her darker half, especially after becoming aware of the fact she's nothing but a clone of her. And yes, Odin was aware that young Twyla was an experiment and clone when rescuing her, but that's part of the reason he wanted to give her a good life and loving family. 
Anyways, Michael and Rui are shocked to discover this, but realize this is why the shadow leader of the new reform team, Cypher, would be foolish enough to work alongside Twyla. Because this leader needed her as Lavrina's work is essential to their plan and the creation of Shadow Warp Pokemon. And probably to this device that attracts the Shadow Pokemon as well. As once again she did help create the Shadow Slayer's blueprints which are two sides of the same coin with this device. So in a sense she is the real brains of the operation. Michael however is both heartbroken and furious as the HQ lab is burnt down and this also doubled as his family's home. Luckily, his family weren't there at the time of the incident, and Professor Crane made it out, but barely. But all of their work and what they were able to reconstruct of the Purify Chamber, and any hopes they had of restoring Zion's memories, are now lost. Michael and Rui command their Pokemon to attack Shadow Lugia in an epic cutscene where Shadow Lugia takes on their Pokemon, as Michael and Rui watch helplessly as their Pokemon are defeated one by one. Michael is also hurt as Lugia not that long ago was his Pokemon. After destroying the lab, dropping this bombshell, and wiping the floor with them, Twyla flies away on her Shadow Lugia, laughing maniacally. Meanwhile, back in the Ori Desert, Zion and Namid are suffering from their own defeat as Shadow Deoxys managed to escape their trap. But Namid is convinced her father Chatham can use the data collected from this encounter to perfect their tech for the next one. After making their way through the rest of the desert and snagging some Shadow Pokemon, you'd make your way to Isola Town, late at night where you and Namid, exhausted, plan to crash before heading back to Fennec City. But first, you plan to snag the Shadow Gengar that resides there. Isola is an abandoned Midwest-inspired ghost town, which apparently has been abandoned since the Shadow Virus first arrived on the Cosmic Meteorite, as another Shadow Warp Pokemon, Shadow Gengar, tormented the town, scaring everyone off. Next, representing the most relatable of the Seven Sins, Envy. Let's face it, we've all had that ugly green monster show its face at some point or another and have someone we are or have been jealous of. Well, I chose to make a shadow form for the literal shadow Pokemon Gengar to represent Envy as I feel it would be jealous of Clefable being as it's its shadow, which is why this shadow form looks even more like a Clefable as this shadow Gengar possessed and essentially merged with a poor innocent Clefable. With its design now featuring Clefable's wings, tail, and hair swirl, accompanied by the classic creepy Gengar face, and even a darker color scheme as it is now pitch black versus purple. Its new stats also take some slight inspiration from Clefable's as it has much higher HP than Gengar, and its signature move Shadow Light is also a reference to Clefable's commonly used move Metronome as it uses its finger in the same sense to execute this move. It's also a reference to Clefable's connection to the moon as the attack uses moonlight to obliterate the foe and like Metronome the outcome is unpredictable as it will lower one of the target's stats at random. The fact it lowers one of the foe's stats is also to represent the fact it's envious of them as let's face it, most people only try to tear down those they are envious of. Shadow Gengar, since having the town to itself, is bored. That is, until the two of you show up. But once again, you're not the only ones after the Shadow Pokemon. Cypher member and Cowboy Boon appears as he's once again been tasked to snag the Shadow Pokemon, with no more room left for failure after failing to snag Shadow Milotic in the last chapter. So you'd have one last showdown against Boon in the barren streets of this ghost town. He even has another Shadow Pokemon in the form of Shadow Low Kicks for you to snag. But unlike your previous battles against this gunslinger, this one would not be a double battle. Afterwards, Boon unable to go back to his employer after a third failure, with his family's safety on the line, will tell you everything you need to hear in the town's empty saloon, where you'd each heal up your Pokemon and have a nice chat. During this time, he'll tell you Team Cypher's next meeting place in Celebe Town, at some sort of beach resort, saying that's all he can tell you for his and his family's safety, but you can't trust anyone or anything until you get your memories back, and that he must leave and make it to his family before it's too late as they will have to seek hiding until the smoke settles, but he is now obviously rooting for you at this point, because he's pretty much a dead man otherwise. He then says you're not all that bad for a hunk of metal, as he walks out of the saloon and tips his hat to you and your evolutions, petting Drekion who actually leans into it, and giving Mummion's hand tail a firm handshake. But Big Tough Boon lets out a scream after getting outside and being startled by Shadow Gengar. Boon will then throw out their Gauchiro, with the Scrappy ability allowing them to attack Ghost-type Shadow Gengar. While a scared Namid will hide under a table, saying she loves aliens but she does not do ghosts. In this boss battle within this creepy ghost town, within the dead of night beneath the full moon, you'd have various action commands as you chase Shadow Gengar in and out the various buildings within this town, as Gengar would phase room to room as you chase it through these creepy dark buildings, avoiding any holes in the floor as some of these buildings are falling apart. 
During this battle, Boone and Galchiro will be assisting you during the fight in the auto attack sections and some of the action command sections as well. But Shadow Gengar will also have help as it calls upon other ghost type Pokemon as they try to attack you and scare you away. In the barren streets, you'd have to contend with rolling Bramblin and an abrasive Bramblegast trying to strike you down and making it hard to get to Shadow Gengar in the auto attack sections of the battle. In the jailhouse, you'd have a Dusclops lock you in one of the jail cells after being lured there by Shadow Gengar, and you wouldn't be able to escape until defeating it and its goons being a bunch of Duskull. In the saloon, you'd have a Poltegeist and several Sinistee causing chaos in the abandoned establishment as the action commands would have Boone's Cacturn shooting needles at the possessed glassware Pokemon. And in the dark and dusty library, you'd chase Gengar as it would phase through all the bookshelves as you'd make your way through the library with several Litwick illuminating the space with the Chandelua ready to burn the place down as it would catch all of the bookshelves on fire as you'd have to put out the flames using the action commands as Boone's Mudstill would stomp the flames out. After chasing Shadow Gengar into an old hotel, you'd have to battle a restless Streamin, accompanied by a nightmarish horde of Kamara, until hitting the action command and breaking through the window and jumping back down onto the streets, where the rest of the battle would commence. This time, with the horde of wild Limbu popping out of the ground, trying to grab at you so you can't reach Shadow Gengar and drag you down. Once weakening Shadow Gengar enough, it will call upon the power of the full moon to unleash a big attack in the form of an orb of bright shadow infused light it hurls at you, but if you hit the last action command in time, Galchiro will be able to swing its lasso tail and grab hold of its orb and fling it right back at the unsuspecting Gengar, allowing both Mummion and Drekion each to lunge off the side of two buildings in order to finish Gengar off and end the battle, allowing you to snag it. And after doing so, there would be a scene of all the ghost type Pokemon helping Shadow Gengar hunt this town as they disappear. Here. And shortly afterwards, Boone will ride off into the darkness as well. As Namid tries to say now that the ghost Pokemon are gone, they can finally find one of these buildings to sleep in so they can get a nice rest for what's to come. Zion says they don't really need to sleep, but they will happily guard over Namid as she does. After waking up the next day, Zion and Namid would make their way through the bottom half of the desert on their way back to Fennec City. But on their way, they would stumble into an excavation site where they would meet a young archaeologist and rock type specialist, Rex, who has a special fixation on fossil Pokemon. Hardworking but hot-headed, Rex knows exactly what he wants and goes after it. He is often accompanied by his partner Pokemon, a scrappy Tyrant, who he is often seen chasing after as it's constantly getting itself into trouble. This is a real problem when they are exploring underground tunnels or chambers as Tyrant has a habit of touching things it's not supposed to. Think Abu and Aladdin. Without missing a beat, Rex will challenge you to a Pokemon battle as you're trespassing onto this excavation site with his team consisting of several fossil Pokemon, including the two fossil Pokemon from my first Fakemon region, the Luika region. Rex fell in love with the excavation of fossils and ancient artifacts after assisting his grandfather on many explorations throughout the Luika region. His grandfather Douglas, also a rock type specialist, has refurbished the abandoned gym, recently becoming a gym leader in the Luika region, replacing Winda and Winter after their move to the Firin region. But more on that later in my Luika focused videos coming to this channel pretty soon actually. Starting with Pokemon Legends Elamage, which is a project exploring the ancient past of the Luika region. Now back to the Ori region. This is Rex's first excavation in a foreign region on his own since his grandfather took the position of gym leader. So he's looking to really impress him while excavating the Ori region's arid deserts. However, the dark contagion found on the nearby meteorite has seemed to somehow revived all of the uncovered fossils and infected them, making for some Jurassic Shadow Pokemon. Helpless without a snag machine, Zion offers Rex and his team assistance in stopping these unruly Shadow Pokemon before all of the excavation team's hard work is destroyed and any of them are hurt. Namid says they don't have a lot of time as they don't know when Cypher will execute their plan and they need to intercept their next meeting in Celebe City, but Zion tells her they can't let innocents get hurt on their watch, so she agrees to help, as the three of them would try to round up all these Shadow Pokemon rampaging through the excavation site, many of which would make a great addition to your team, so get your snag machine ready. After finding one of these shadow Pokemon, there'd be a cutscene of it causing damage in the site, with Namid and Rex bickering as you all try to stop them. Namid and Rex, both being so young, would fight like kids at the playground, constantly trying to one-up the other and hurling childish insults at the other, while Zion tries their best to tune them both out and get the job done. 
After snagging all of these frenzied fossil Pokemon and saving the site, Rex will thank you before getting into one more spat with the mid. While Drekion, after proving itself to be a hopeless romantic in the last chapter with Glaceon, will nudge into the mid, pushing her closer to Rex, trying to make them kiss. Mummion will use its hand like tail to pull Drekion back, but then laugh alongside it. The mid and Rex, however, don't seem to find it as funny as they continue to bicker. So Zion, Mummion, and Drekion will slowly walk into the distance without Namid, who is too busy arguing to even notice. But she'll meet up with you back at Fennec City, where they will catch up with Michael and Rui about everything that happened at the lab. Namid will try to comfort Michael as she knows he also lost his home in this fire, and Michael and Rui are about to come clean to Zion about their lost memories and the whereabouts of Wes, but before they can, they all get an alert that Deoxys is on the move heading towards Celebe City, which given what they know about Cypher's plans, can't be a coincidence, so Zion rushes after it, thinking it could lead them to the device that attracts the Shadow Virus. Michael and Rui look at each other, both relieved and a little nervous after Zion rushes out. Namid not reading the room, interfering with the shared glance, asking if they have anything to eat. So your next stop would be Celebe City, a new beach town and resort I added to the Ori region filled with plenty of new shadow Pokemon for you to snag along the beach. After exploring this bustling beach town, you'd go into one of the resorts trying to seek out any signs of Team Cypher as you look for clues. And in doing so, you'll end up crossing paths with a fan favorite character from both of the previous installments in the Ori Regions games, Mirror B. A character I know a lot of you have been anticipating the arrival of in this story. Mirror B, while still the same energetic baddie, has turned a new leaf. Well, kind of. As he was able to use his fame in the Ori region to keep him from being indicated with Dr. Grievel, Lavrina, and the rest of Team Cypher at the end of Gale of Darkness, as his loyal fans created a petition to plead for his innocence and keep him out of jail. Having retired from a life of crime since Cypher's defeat, Mirror B, using his previous earnings, has built his own beach resort in Celebe City. It is here he has his own nightclub, where he makes sure to make a cameo at every night with his sweet dance moves. As loud and flamboyant as ever, Mirror B's Pokemon battling skills are just as impressive as his dance moves. Now that Cypher has been reformed under new leadership, he's no longer an admin as he'd rather live a peaceful, stress-free life of partying. But, Mirror B still works for the new Cypher group, using his connections at his club and resort to gather intel and allowing the group to conduct private business meetings outside of some shady, more obvious locations such as the Under. Although he leaves the dirty work to all of his grunt and avoids getting involved as much as possible. That is, until he discovers the Shadow Slayer has shown up at his resort, in which case he will call in some Cypher grunts to send after Zion. After you defeat these grunts, Mirror B decides he must take matters into his own hands and will give you a private show in the form of a high-stakes Pokemon battle on the club's dance floor. Mirror B having an updated team, of course consisting of his infamous Ludicolo, but only one this time. Instead, he has plenty of other musical amphibian is Pokemon to make some noise, including a Shadow Toxtricity, for you to snag. After defeating Mirror B, he will try to boogie out of there as quickly as possible, as he seems to be scared of being dragged any further into Team Cypher's plans, as he's living this nice cushy life, but ends up spilling the beans, telling you exactly what they were discussing while last at the club. Apparently they are planning to leave from Gadion Port to Citadel Dark Isle, with lots of precious cargo on board. He's not sure what it is, but he keeps insisting that's all he knows, and to please leave him out of it, as he has a performance tonight he's been really jazzed for. Zion walks away and after he leaves the room, Mirror B will talk to his background dancers as he tells them he's glad he's gone so they can get back to rehearsal, as he continues to dance seemingly unbothered by everything that just happened. That is until Drekion sneaks back into the room and uses its move Scale Shot to cut down the disco ball above Mirror B's head as it bonks him over the head, and Drekion struts away out of the room back to Zion's side. So that's where you go next, to the iconic location of Gadion Port, found in both Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, so I had to include it in this chapter as well. Gadion Port being a lively seaport city with active trade along its docks. Lootering sailors are a common sight as ships come and go. It is also home to one of Mirror B's old venues, the Krabby Club, from the previous games, which is a bar featuring performing acts where you will go for information as you try to track down Team Cypher. One of the patrons you talk to will even mention Mirror B, saying they used to watch him perform here, but now he thinks he's too cool for a dump like this, only performing at his prissy high-end club resort. 
in the past, Citadark Isle could be reached from here by Robo Kyogre, but Robo Kyogre is not featured in this game, so instead you will be sneaking on one of Team Cypher's cargo ships to get there, but not before being spotted by Hothead Admin Gonzap, who will challenge you to a Pokemon battle on the docks. Gonzap is another character from the previous games who Zion has already battled on this adventure, but Gonzap will have an updated team of tough Pokemon in this battle, including a Shadow Electros for you to snag. After defeating him, you'd be able to sneak on board before the ship takes off, as Mamion and Drakion would push him into the water so he couldn't stop you. While on board this cargo ship, you'd have to avoid and even battle even more Team Cypher grunts as you're spotted, but your time at sea will face rough waters as Shadow Deoxys comes crashing down onto the ship with its sights set on the Shadow Slayer, Zion. Still in its bulky defense form, you'd battle Shadow Deoxys out at sea as a storm rages rocking the ship amongst the rough ocean waves throughout this battle as you'd have to avoid cargo boxes as they slide and even fall all over the deck of the ship as it's beaten in the storm. So the ground and battlefield will be very inconsistent and shaky throughout this battle. These conditions will set up a lot of your cinematic action commands as you and your evolutions would have to avoid this shuffling cargo and falling overboard as the ship is thrown around in the storm. Midway through the battle after further inspecting one of the broken cargo containers, Zion will discover the special cargo being shipped on board is a bunch of snag machines that Cypher plans to sell to further their plans of world domination after attracting even more meteorites with this dark contagion on it that cre creates shadow Pokemon. So they can sell these snag machines to the highest bidders in order to monopolize the chaos and use these powerful shadow Pokemon to do their bidding. But the second half of the battle after weakening defense form Deoxys will take you inside the ship as there will be an action command dodging one of Shadow Deoxys' attacks and in doing so that attack will create a massive hole in the ship as water starts rushing in and you then have to try to make it out of the ship before it sinks while battling an angry Shadow Deoxys in the rising water. The fact that it is in its sturdy defense form makes it even harder for you to harm and get around Deoxys, so in addition to the turn-based style sections of battle, a timer will appear on the screen in the auto attack sections, and if you don't defeat Deoxys before the timer runs out, you automatically lose the battle and will sink to the bottom of the ocean on this cargo ship. So I hope you have a team of your toughest Pokemon before boarding the ship, as you'll need it in order to pierce Shadow Deoxys' seemingly impenetrable defenses, with your only chance of doing so outside of the traditional turn-based sections being within the action commands that pop up, as your auto attacks will do little to no damage against the fence form Deoxys. The final action command will have Drekion use all of its might to force Shadow Deoxys down the flooded hallway in the ship before swimming up the staircase to the deck of the ship where Mummion will use its bandages to lock the cabin door locking Deoxys inside as it floods and seemingly drowns, allowing Zion and Mummion and Drekion to quickly look for a way off before going down with the ship as well. Zion will finally find one last escape boat as a Team Cypher grunt is rushing to it before the boat is hit by a massive wave and they end up going flying off the ship, allowing Zion and their evolutions to get on the lifeboat where they will have to brave the storm. In doing so, they will watch what's left of the ship go under, but shortly afterwards they will watch Shadow Deoxys, once again in its original form, come bursting out of the water. Luckily it doesn't spot Zion before turning back into its speed form and bursting away. Thinking the coast is clear, Zion would be able to spot Citadark Isle off in the distance as they slowly drift towards it. After arriving on Citadark Isle, you'd encounter many ruthless dark and fire type Pokemon for you to snag. Citadark Isle is a volcanic island and the headquarters of Cypher in the second game Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, surrounded by strong currents which are artificially created by Cypher to repel would-be intruders. Currents which Zion probably wouldn't have been able to survive if they were human, but luckily being made of titanium and other strong metals, they were able to make it out unscathed. I think it's safe to assume he put Mummion and Drekion back in their Pokeballs so they'd be safe from these rough currents. Anyways, the island has a massive dome in the crater of a volcano. There is also a labyrinth of lava rooms, caves, puzzles within the previous game, which would make a return in this one as well, as you'd have to face numerous cypher grunts before making it to the summit of the volcano, where the dark device that attracts shadow Pokemon and this dark contagion seems to be located. So obviously Zion wants to destroy this device, as it is key to Cypher's plans, as they try to make their way to the top of the volcano to do exactly that. But before getting it to do so, they hear an alarm go off as a mechanical door slowly opens, revealing a berserk Shadow Warp Pokemon, Shadow Cookatrix. 
being the corrupted Shadow Warp version of one of my own Fakemon from the Furin region, as I already have represented one of my Fakemon from my first Fakemon region, the Luika region, in the form of Shadow Treasure in the first chapter. The last Shadow form and of the Seven Deadly Sins is Wrath, represented by my Furin Pokemon, Kukatrix. Inspired by the monstrous rooster-like dragon, which is featured within the Bible and various mythology, the Cockatrix. As this beast is said to cause destruction, and that paired with its fire dragon typing, I felt fit the idea of Wrath really well. Its normal form is golden as it also takes inspiration from the golden rooster from Norse mythology. However, this shadow form, like most of the others, is now black with ominous purple flames and tethered wings. As it would be a force to be reckoned with, especially with its new and improved stats, and its destructive new signature shadow move, Shadow Wrath, which works just like Outrage as it's an incredibly powerful attack used in a frenzy until causing confusion. This boss battle would easily be one of the most challenging within Pokemon Descent of Darkness XD as its immense power and speed truly make it a worthy representative of the Sin Wrath. So a no longer caged Shadow Cookatrix would be on a rampage charging at you, breaking through the glass dome, knocking you out onto the volcano where this heated boss battle would take place as you'd have to dodge Shadow Cookatrix's fiery and fierce attacks consisting of fire blasts and razor sharp claw swipes, as well as vicious bites with its long neck, as it tries to push you into the pools and rivers of lava coursing through the battlefield, which would do damage to you and your Pokemon or automatically end the battle, although hitting the cinematic action command buttons would allow you to knock it into the lava, but being a fire type, it would emerge from the magma with a vengeance, with its attacks being even swifter and deadlier than before. After weakening its health into the yellow, the fight would make its way back into Cypher's headquarters as you'd be able to once again lock it up in its cage, closing the door to its chamber, hitting another button as gallons of water would pour down onto it, seemingly finishing it off, as you'd open the mechanical door and steam would come rushing out into the lab space as you'd be able to snag the last of the seven Shadow Warp Pokemon, and after doing so, make your way to the top of the volcano to destroy this device before Team Cypher can use it to execute the next stage of their plan. After getting into an elevator which will take Zion to the top of the volcano where the device is located, Zion will contact Rui and Michael to tell them he has found the device and plans to destroy it. Rui begs Zion to be careful and is about to tell him something important, but before she can, the doors to the elevator open, revealing none other than the hero of the first game, Pokemon Coliseum, Wes, on the other side of them, as he has seemed to beat Zion to the punch. Zion, shocked to see Wes and instantly recognizing him as they do share memories, ends the call as he will start to short circuit again as more of his memories start to rush in. And while Mummion and Drekion would normally be worried as this is happening, during this time, Mummion will run to embrace Espeon, as Drekion does the same to embrace Wes's Umbreon. Wes smiles and pets them both, as he then slowly approaches Zion, happy to see him as he puts his hand firmly on their shoulder, snapping Zion out of their malfunction, saying, Good job. I knew you'd find your way back to me. Zion, acting as if he's seen a ghost, snaps back and says, let's finish this once and for all, ready to destroy the device, as Wes grins and nods, as all four evolutions make their way into position, ready to strike. But before they do, Zion quickly uses his scanner on the device to see what they're working with, but is shocked after discovering that this can't be the real dark device, as it doesn't contain any of the dark energy used to attract the dark contagion or shadow Pokemon. Confused, Zion turns off his scanner, prepared to share this discovery with Wes, for being able to do so, Wes will violently thrust the fist of his snag machine right into an unsuspecting Zion's chest, ripping out his core as he looks at it and then gives an evil grin before saying, You walked right into my trap. Pushing Zion into the volcano below, with his lifeless robotic body landing right on a ledge beside a pool of lava that seems to be slowly inching closer and closer to him. Mummion and Drekion, shocked, lunge back and growl at Wes as they loved Zion, but Wes will then remind them who they really belong to. Mummion, Drekion, welcome home my friends. As Umbreon and Espeon rub up against the base of his legs, and Mummion and Drekion, terrified, look at each other, unsure what to do. As their lifeless master, Zion, lies down below in the pit of the volcano. 